Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of In Our Humble Opinion. Ayo! <laughs> well, we are back. I'm Gilbert Chia, and I am joined here by my friends and co-panelists, Daisy Rani, cool grandma on the right. Namaste. And Chris grandma. Handsome Hanson on the left. Hey everyone. And uh, I know that uh, you must have missed us because we weren't on last week. I know we got some text messages asking what happened to us. Uh, we just took a one-week break and are glad to be back. So yes. today, we've got some very interesting topics to talk about. Uh, we've got good news, and we've got villains, and we've got vaccines, uh, and we've got uh, interesting stuff to talk about and discuss and argue about, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So first thing we're going to be talking about is about a case of alleged molestation on a train. So what's new? Seems like every day we have a case of molestation somewhere. Uh, or exposure or something in uh, Singapore. And uh, why don't we pass this story on to... Obviously. Chris. Yes. Here we go. Uh -huh. That's right. Tell us about this, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. The quote of the week. Is no. it really a quote? <laughs> yes, yes. Let's decide. Well, basically, uh, what we see in, on our computer screens is this thing called the quote of the week. But I really don't think this guy is a quote. There has been this, this, this has been going around, uh, it posted also on, on, uh, in Mothership uh, about a bystander who called out a man who was moving uncomfortably too close to a woman on an MRT. Now, this guy, the bystander, his name is Dwayne, uh, he said he witnessed the incident uh, and he took to Instagram and Facebook to talk about it, to chronicle what happened on November the 16th. Um, and... There was a picture that was uploaded. Now, this is why I, th I, I really think that this guy, this wasn't intentional. Um, the picture that was uploaded um, shows, showed the man's hand placed squarely on the seat occupied by the female passenger. And uh, the, the, what shall we call it? The snitch not snitch what's what's the word for it no, come vigilante. On, come on. the witness yeah. vigilante. Okay. Witness. the witness the vigilante the voyeur um <clears throat> also observed that the uh this alleged unsolicited physical contact made the female passenger clearly uncomfortable okay and though she did not speak up about it um so what this guy did was that he gave that that commuter, that guy, the other guy, the benefit of the doubt, assuming that he was asleep. A couple of minutes later, he observed that the man did wake up, moved even closer to the female passenger, uh, in res and, and in response, this Donald guy stood up, tapped the man on his leg, and asked him to move away from her. Now, according to him, to Donald, the man moved away, and stopped physical contact with her, though he didn't even seem apologetic and went back to sleep. So what Donald is now urging people to do is to step up if they witness such things happening to strangers. Mm. He also encouraged women not to be afraid to speak up for themselves and that there shouldn't be, I quote unquote, quote, start quote, there shouldn't be tolerance for such disgusting behavior, end quote. Now, you'll go first. Where? Talk about this. Oh, right. You are now Donald. What? You said Donald? The name of the guy was Donald. Yeah, Donald. Oh, okay. Why, why I Donald? Thought you, I thought you were thinking of Donald Trump and just calling him. No, Donald. no, he's oh, got molestation boy. cases, but okay. that one is different. That's, that's why I was like, <laughs> okay. Well, uh, no, no, that's true. <laughs> no, I, I think, what, what was he? Is that uh, what? Pussy uh, grabbing? Okay, so yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But it didn't bother. In his own words. He did not bother 70 million people who did vote for him. Yes. But that's another that's story. That's another story. Okay, yes. okay so ahead. going back to our Donald here. Yeah. I think the judgment call made by the witness or the vigilante, or the Donald, taking that picture, that judgment call has to be very, very, is very important. Exactly. Because, God forbid, you take a picture, I mean, I'm just thinking hypothetically, if there was a migrant worker or somebody sitting, and you're genuinely sleeping, yes. and your hand does touch, right. and somebody calls you out for that, yep. and this picture goes on. Sure, on of course, yes, radio, yes, and, yes. And then. But I think more importantly, I am agreeable with the part about the women talking about 
-hmm. because I feel that the person who can make that best call sitting over there is that woman. Because we have within us, you know, uh, that, that consciousness, that understanding that if somebody touches you and it's a genuine mistake, you know that. Mm. If there's somebody touching you, even a little finger with mm. the another kind of idea, mm -hmm. it's molestation, mm -hmm. you get the feeling. So yes, I think it is time that women take it in their own hands and maybe strongly, sternly, but nicely. And there's another thing. If you are in a public train like this, and if that woman hopefully has the courage, musters up the courage to say in a nice manner, excuse me, please, there will be other people around who will look, take notice, and that would be enough to send a very strong message to this person if he was actually molesting. Yeah. So yeah, it's important. I for think women that to take okay. So my seat. take on this is that I think that there are obviously cases where people do innocently fall asleep and mistakenly yeah. touch. Definitely yeah. that happens. Yeah. All right. Uh, and I do agree with you that obviously the woman or the person would be a good judge. Of, the best. Of, yeah. Yeah. Although, you know, there are also cases when uh, people, because of racial prejudices, get angry when someone is genuinely asleep and touches them. Correct. Okay? But at least we this know that is not well. molestation. Yes. That is a really yeah. a different uh, or, or, they, or they could think it was molestation, yeah, yeah, you know, because yeah. of their own prejudices. Correct. That definitely happens as well. Uh, I think that in this case, it's not really necessary for the guy to upload a photograph. He can just have talked about it and said that, listen, you can just, you know, stand up. I think it is good that he intervened, though, in a sense, like if you believe okay. that something has happened enough to actually intervene, uh, then you're putting yourself on the line. And I think that that is a good thing in general, because what I'm against usually is people who just take a photograph and of something it. happening, this, posting okay. it without actually doing, doing something. This is a discussion that we had, yes, we've had with, about the yeah. old man who was taking pictures of litter bugs litter and bugs. sending it to the police. Yeah. So this was another question that I wanted to bring up to both of you all, that again and again, we find out it's that judgment. It's that line. Where do you go over that line and intervene? Or where do you do yeah. something concrete? I don't think there's to one. Change social I don't think behavior. there's one specific answer because every circumstance is different. But in a case like this, if this guy wanted to, to to have more proof, an easy way would have been to do a video, right? I mean, instead of a photograph, just turn on the video and then film it, and then let people see for themselves. But then That's again, imagine a situation where that guy was really innocent, and you're on sure, that of video. Sure, of course. But before you actually post the so video, you need to be really sure of that. So seeing. we again come back to the. How do you make that it's really sure? Yeah, and Where there's no one judgment. If, if I may. Where yes. is the, you know, the Please, vigilante Chris. has to be able to make that call. If I may, I'm so glad the two of you have said the things that you said because I, you're right. But yes. I, like to, I like to bring to your close attention something I've just spotted mm. during the shoot. Just, mm. just. I might be wrong. Mm. But before I go there, uh, I would like to say, yeah, I don't like this vigilantism, mm. which we've been talking about for a couple of episodes. Um, I, but I do like that Donald has did, did make a move to tell the person in, if indeed he did. Huh? Yeah. If indeed he did. According to him, he did. Because we've also been calling people to step up front yes, and exactly. do something. Yes. yes. And don't when you hear your neighbors manner. being bullied you or don't have to take pictures of it. So yeah. I'm just going to um I'm just gonna say that that's the right thing for him to do, but taking the shot of this and posting it is rubbish. But I'd like you to really take a close look at this photograph. Mm -hmm. This man, it seems to me though, in my opinion, that he might be unwell in terms of being sick at that moment. Because his trouser pants on the left hand side, his left hand side is wet. Mm. Oh dear. He, it, it is not that kind of, it is not the leering wetness I'm referring to. It is okay. urination wetness. All right. I think this man, in judging by the position he's seated, he just cannot control or can is not feeling well enough. Mm. And he's leaning to one side. If he had wanted to be, look at the hand, the position of the hand. If he had wanted to do more, it wouldn't. It would have been even closer. Yeah. So again, okay. we, yeah, it's hard to tell with one still. It's really hard around. to tell. No, no, so the, the thing, fact you know, of the matter so, is that we yeah. do agree that whether you call yourself a witness, a vigilante, what no, that if, decision you make of taking that yes. and posting it. Yes, but Daisy is Gilbert. Very, very. Crucial. Daisy and Gilbert. I just want to 
just say this. Imagine if it were really true that that man was, was sick mm-hmm. and wasn't well. And then this guy takes a photograph of him. And if he saw this yeah. for himself... I don't think the guy's face was shown. I mean, anyway, the guy's wearing a mask, you know. Mm-hmm. And by the way, his name is Dwayne, not Donald. Oh, I'm so sorry to all that's Donalds not, in the world, with the exception of the idiot in the White House. No, but that, I apologize to all Donalds. When I said Donald, I really thought you were talking about the and you Donald. Lo- and and you allowed me to drown. He tried to, at least he, he lifted me up. No, you no, but I know. I did No, no, I just drown. only looked closely. I thought you, you were know? being so clever I, uh, that you were calling uh, uh, Dwayne uh, uh, Donald. Yeah, no, no, you can borrow this, huh? It's my reading glasses. He doesn't yeah. want okay, to put on the spectacles. Okay. All right, so He's enough about that. Man. Let's 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 move on. Okay. okay. So yeah. now we're going to go into some good news, uh, but which I would like to actually uh, uh, clarify again. So it's been big publicity for several years now that the Economist Intelligence Unit, which is a research uh, company uh, that's part of the Economist uh, uh, Media Group, has been doing a survey or a study of the most expensive cities in the world. And I remember several years ago when Singapore made the top city in the world for the first time, uh, or the first time they were doing the survey, it made huge news all over. And, uh, you know, of course, people, a lot of Singaporeans were saying, yeah, you know, I knew it, you know, the government sucks, you know, and this is what Singapore is and all of that. So expensive. So expensive. So, uh, you know, this year, we're not the most expensive anymore. We've actually dropped a couple of spots and there's a reason for that. Mm. But, you know, I think it's very important before we actually go into this, I would like to clarify, okay? Then I'll turn it over to you guys. Can can tahan a bit, huh? Okay. I just want to clarify because there were a lot of things that were misunderstood, misconstrued about this survey. First of all, if you actually go to the site and read it, the Economist Intelligence Unit said, we did this survey for expats who are traveling to different countries and resettling in different countries Mm. so that there is a universal unit of measurement that you can judge which cities are more expensive. Mm. And in order to do this, we do several things. One is we measure everything in US dollars. So we convert whatever it may cost in Sing dollars or Thai baht or wherever into US dollars. Uh, And then the next thing is we measure the same items. And some of the items that we measure, which is important to say, is a rental apartment in a condominium, Mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Not HDB, all right? Uh, A rental uh, house, okay? Rent a house. Uh, International schools, not local schools. What's tuition and fees for uh, uh, schools in French, German, and American and English schools. So Mm -hmm. that's what they measure. Mm -hmm. They measure the cost of a car, a family car and deluxe car, as well as car maintenance and road taxes. Uh, and they measure health and sports. And including in the sports would be the cost of golf membership. Mm, All right. So when they measure these things, they found, not surprisingly, I have to say, mm. that Singapore is way up there because, you know, these things are expensive. You've got uh, golf, you've got a car, You've got rental of a house and private condo. Yes. You've got international schools. So that is the situation. All these um, are the most expensive I, in Singapore. You Gilbert. got that 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 data from the actual EIU yes. specific to this? Yes. yes. This is funny because what I'm reading here, as reported in, a, in Mothership, uh-huh. <laughs> um, that... Uh, it looked at factors like currency volatility, supply yes. chain problems, the impact of taxes and subsidies. Okay, okay, the road taxing, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All, shifts all in of, cons- yeah, of course. And all the of that is related to this. Yes. All of this is related to that because when you're doing currency, you got to realize, let's say, for example, a car cost, I don't know, 100,000 Sing dollars. They're going to convert that to US dollars. Mm. All right? Mm. So it's 175,000 or 160,000, 140,000. So US that's what dollars. they meant by volatility. Yes. No, no. Because the there's volatility, volatility, obviously. Yeah, but the volatility you know? also has a lot of different repercussions. Yes. Because, you know, when you look at the, when you peg your currency, then you're looking at a huge area of export, import. I mean, because everything is pegged to the currency. So I do agree that the topics that you talked about are the most expensive in Singapore. Yes. So the, I think it's very important for, this is very irrelevant in a way to the locals. So when you're a local in Singapore, this, you should not be thinking that, oh my God, I'm living in the most expensive city in the world. Because honestly, with the exception of these things, I mean, you know, most people don't go to national schools. Most people don't have golf club membership, you know, membership or yeah. play golf. Yeah. Uh, they don't rent condominiums or houses. Mm. Uh, and you know, obviously, we all know cars are expensive. So, but now we are ranked fourth. 
Yeah. Right? Mm. After Zurich, Paris, and what's the other country? Yeah, but Hong Kong. But all Hong of Kong. the measurements are still the same. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. My, my, but my point is, it doesn't mean that we are ranked fourth today. We're no longer up there in the world ranking mm -hmm. as the more, world's most expensive. doesn't mean that prices have gone generally down. It's just that the, these other countries' prices have gone up. You yes see, and no. Yeah. Let me clarify that actually, <laughs> because Singapore is actually in a very interesting position right now. And I say interesting, not meaning good, uh, is that because of lower demand, because we've actually had a population shrinkage for the first time in a long while, Singapore's population has shrunk. We're actually in a state economically now called deflation when prices are actually lower. No. Yay. Okay, so we're in deflation. Yay. So that's one of the reasons also why uh, we have dropped in the rankings. Okay. But yeah. it's a but it's if, important to realize basically what they measure. If you yes. were to do a measurement for locals of food from hawker centers, food from food courts, food from supermarkets, uh, HDB flat rentals, local school costs, lo local healthcare costs, mm -hmm. I think you will get a very D different. Okay, rejection. my here's my question. I, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. No. Um, no. Here's Which my. Do I no. No. I, I know because I mean we both want to give our yeah, take okay, on what you're saying. Is this, so what do you think? Is this a good or a bad thing Correct. in your opinion? So I it? think it's a good thing or a bad thing, which is based on the perspective you look at. Correct. Okay. You gave us a perspective. Okay. If you look at some of the important things that the expats might be using, because when you talk yeah, about yeah, and this, you know, I'll just or you talk example, about the locals, yeah, man. But you see, today when you manage business, especially in this post-COVID era. It's also very key to know where your business is going to be located. So I'm talking about in that perspective, what is happening is good. Because see, the world out there, it's very highly competitive. I mean, and the lessons that we have learned from COVID, where businesses would like to go, is having, you know, where we have political stability, we have efficient supply chains, we are managing the currency volat volatility, like you said, and we take advantage of working from home. So the foreign labor is down. And overall, we've become just more efficient. So I feel if we can keep Singapore cost efficient, yes. we would really become very, course, very prosperous. Totally, of course. Well, Because there's one more thing, if I may. Because around the region, our system, our regulatory system is really trusted and the legal sure. systems are trusted. So me, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Let me so just we, point out one thing. Okay? So it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. It's it, a good it, thing when prices fall. Are concerned. Okay? But I think businesses are yeah. concerned. But, but even for individuals, even for yeah. us, okay, I mean, as course, individuals, that, let's say I want to play golf and golf fees go down. It's still a good thing for locals. Okay. So just to give you an example, one of the things they measure is what's the cost of a Burberry raincoat. Okay. Oh, gosh. Because that's a universal standard. So it's so all it, a luxury item. It's luxury item. So it's about. very important for people to understand this. You know, don't just jump when you look at the headlines of a survey. Right? <laughs> who, no. who, who here owns a Burberry raincoat? I mean, I do, but that's because I lived overseas. Yeah, right? I, I, I have to apologize to Mothership because it is stated here. Uh, the price, prices include food, drink, clothing, household supplies, personal care items, home rents, transport, utility bills, all cool. Yes. Then, Private schools, domestic yes. help, and Correct. recreational Correct. costs. Yes. yes. No, but when yeah. you talk about golf memberships or when you talk about cars, one must also understand that Singapore is now become a very, very wealthy nation, and practically all these memberships, whether it's Singapore Island Country Club or the Tana Mega Club, a lot of them are owned by the locals. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. These yeah. cars course. and all that. So, yeah, yeah. just the fact that the foreign workers might there might be a shrinkage there. It's just part of the whole picture. Yes, yes. And I think it's also important to realize that, you know, we import everything. Yes, in yes. I agree. So we are at the mercy of what other people want to charge yes. us. Yeah, we even yeah. import our water, right? So on that note, yes. Because we are we are we practically import everything, and you're very right to say that. I think the it's not about reports like this, about whether we're the most expensive mm. or mm. They are no longer the most expensive. They deem mm. most expensive for our country in the world. I think it begins, with, you know, it starts with landlords. Mm. Uh, because retail, you know, the retailers out there, the guys who even set up the F and Bs, you know, the guys who set up even the grocery shops, you know, supermarkets, blah blah blah. They have to to pay landlords. Yes, rents. exactly. Yes. So, so it begin. It starts with them. Definitely. So yeah. let me actually clarify that on that Robinson's point. Robinson's closing down. Yeah, well, that's part of the problem. But I'm let me, very let sad me, about that, yeah. by the way. But, but just, I just want to point out, I think one of the big criticisms of Singapore, which I think is actually justified, uh, you know, obviously we're a very tiny island and the cost of land is expensive. 
But one of the problems had been that very early on when they were pegging commercial real estate prices, they pegged it to land in Raffles Place and they used that as a benchmark to start out all of the land prices. So I think that's one of the big issues there. I see, I, I, is that someone's computer is on. No, no, mine. getting messages. No, um, me. I think it's mine. I don't know why. Sorry, guys. Gilbert. But, no, my computer How is silent. How can you do this kind of thing? My computer is silent. Let me actually... So anyway, I think that, that that's a good discussion for us to have about yeah. Singapore being more expensive city. And also, again, I think it points out the importance of looking beyond the headlines. Don't just look yes. at yes. most expensive yes. city and then jump on it mm. either one way or the other. But, but I do feel that once in a while when you read a headline like this, and you're not really going to stop and interpret it as in as detail as we did. I think it does increase confidence. So I know there have been cases in the past where we used to read that, let's say, Microsoft wants to come through Singapore and wants to open a huge office. And then the next thing you read is, but they've opted to go to Malaysia instead. Mm -hmm. Because we know that real estate and resources are two of the biggest expenses that yeah, Singapore of has. So this does encourage confidence. And we know that if we are too expensive, the companies will go elsewhere. Yes, so, yes. Hey, but I think the problem just is that reading this that is a one-year aberration. Yeah, yeah. You know, Thanks I also to want people to not jump to it next year if they say, hey, Singapore is back to the most expensive city in the world to actually look, how are we most expensive? What are we measuring? You know? Okay, yeah, but you see, trust, efficiency, quality, it doesn't come low for a low cost. And I think businesses also I think understand that, yes. that. I think that one of the bigger problems so, that Singapore has got really is, and maybe we can discuss this another another time, is really the, 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 the problem with labor. You know, right. we just so don't have enough workers and, uh, you know, we are an yeah. expensive labor but, force. But just, just, just before, you see, they introduced this special passes for the high-tech expertise yes. to bring them yes. in. And so I'm thinking, yes, labor is expensive, but we want the best. So if we are already poised that we can get uh, better business, if we are poised that our management of the costs is kept right-sized, more importantly, the word is right-sized, and if we can manage that, and if I was a high-tech expert and I'm deciding whether to go to Silicon Valley or go to Singapore, and if everything fits the bill right, I mean, you know, that's how you attract the best uh, labor yeah. as well. No, I mean, see? attraction, in my opinion, if you get someone, for ex for example, uh, I, I, and, and no disrespect just because I'm pointing it out, because it is quite true. Most of our IT uh, professionals come out of India, mm -hmm. right? Most of the they, world's IT professionals come out of India, right. not just and, Singapore. And the attraction yeah. between Silicon Valley, going to Silicon Valley, besides the money, and coming to Singapore, I would still say, if I were them, I would pick Singapore simply because why? It's very obvious. I'm not going to be sitting in the in the San Andreas fault, you know, I, in terms of yeah, well, natural, no, but yeah. natural, things have changed natural now. calamities yeah. and all that. See, I'd rather yeah. Singapore is safe. You know, and that's a factor. If you want to consider traveling overseas to study or to, to work somewhere, you would consider all these factors for sure, Correct. right? But you yep. know, it's easier said than done. I mean, where I stay in Bombay, where I stay, that the place is right opposite the American embassy. And it is amazing because people start queuing up from 4.35 in the morning. And there are long queues of, of, you know, this whole idea, land of opportunity. I want to go to the US. But now you do see slowly over the years, there is a change where people are understanding that there are opportunities elsewhere as well. Right, and right. not only opportunities, a good lifestyle and a good close to home. Yeah, you're like very good at championing Singapore, home. Daisy. So, so that's no, no, that's why I'm going to ask her. Because yeah. it's kind of yeah. interesting she said that, yeah. right? She used to live in Bombay. Yeah. Why did you pick to come here? Well, I, I to, very frankly, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't pick anything. My husband had to come here. But, <laughs> okay. but it, before that, before we did come here, we did go to New York. And we did live there for a while. And there was this whole discussion about getting offered a green card. And you know something, it was quite amazing, but I declined. Because coming from India, the lifestyle that we had, the, the, the theater scene, the vibrancy, the idea that I am not a minority somewhere, that I can live in India and have a career next to family, and the US was just too far. So I did say no. And then when Singapore came up, those boxes could be ticked, you see. First was being close to home. You know, that four and a half hour flight where you go. Second, I think 
there was a bit of comfort, you know. It's different. You're not scared all the time. Mm-hmm. No famine, and no so, drought, no typhoon, no hurricane. Yeah, no so earthquake. yes. Well, so I mean, I they don't have are, that in New York. No, so I think we are all good at, um, you know, uh, of no talking about Singapore. New yes. York. And, okay, and, and, and so. Yeah, that was yeah. the decision. Yeah. So anyway, uh, talking about safety, now let's go on to mm. obviously a topic that we are all thinking about, which has made the news is about the vaccines. Uh, two vaccines uh, that have been announced by Pfizer and Moderna um, that would show very high uh, efficacy in, in, in the in the mid to high 90s, which is fantastic. Uh, 95% I've, actually, from based on yesterday's yeah, breaking n- news. Yeah, 95%. So the question, obviously, that, that, that people, have, one of the questions that people have raised is, uh, are they less safe because they've been rushed? Because we know that they were produced under... Uh, what they called a um, fast track a warp speed, they called it. Oh no, vaccine. no, no! They called it. Trump called it that. Yeah. Okay, but it actually of it's it's official a name. Yeah, it's a warp speed thing. Yeah. Warp so oh, exactly. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, so let me you know as a resident uh, health reporter here give some resident, assurance. About resident that. U.S. expert as well <laughs> because you've lived there. Yes. Because I declined to live there. Remember? Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Where I did. Uh, and I did get my green card. So um, Ooh. let me Ooh. just read. No, no, no. And I gave it up. So, you know, that's Ooh. another reason for that as well. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for those of you who don't know, if you, uh, if you have a US green card and you come back to Singapore, you have to pay American taxes as well as your Singapore taxes. And Singapore taxes are relatively low. Better give it up, boy. You monetary consideration. <laughs> you get nothing. You get nothing from the US. Double so there's taxation. no reason yeah. why right. you would even want to have the US green card if you're not living there. So... Anyway, let me just uh, assure that the when they took the fast track to develop these vaccines, what they rushed were the uh, financial, logistical, resourcing uh, aspects of it and the red tape aspects, not the testing and not the safety aspects. Mm. So at least insofar as much as Moderna and uh, Pfizer, Pfizer are concerned, mm. uh, they are safe to take. The thing that's interesting to, 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 to keep in mind, and this is very important because there's been a lot of discussion about this among people, is does this mean this is the end of COVID? Because it's, I mean, it's so safe, right? So let me just very quickly talk about vaccines in general. You know, we've had vaccines for 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 for, for generations, um, but in the entire history of vaccines, only one disease has disappeared from the face of the earth, and that is smallpox. Everything else that has a vaccine for it, measles and mumps and diphtheria and all of that, polio. and polio still exists. And the reason for this is sadly because of two things. One is and this is going to occur with COVID as well, is that generally vaccines cost money. They cost money to manufacture. They, 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 you have to buy them. Governments have to buy them in the, in the millions. Um, and they have to be given out to the population. And a, a lot of poor countries in poor parts Correct. of the world do not get do vaccinated. Not yes. I mean, I was just watching an amazing documentary on Channel News Asia called Disease Hunters, where they showed polio on the resurgence in the Philippines, mm. very near to us. And you know, mm. you see this poor three-year-old boy mm. who did not get vaccinated, who's developed polio. And this mm. is the 21st century. Yeah. Even when today, it, Pakistan, yeah. Iraq, all the war-stricken places. Yes. And even without war back. in the poor countries, you do have this problem there. The other thing to keep in mind is that the COVID vaccine needs very cold refrigeration. It's not something you can mm. just store in a minus shelf. 70. You know, minus 70 for the Pfizer one. Minus and 80. Minus, minus uh, 80. 75. Yeah, minus 80. 80. 79. And then minus 20 for the Moderna one. Yeah, which, uh, is, uh, which the poorer which is, countries could handle. Yeah, mm. which is fine. So you need tons of dry ice. And, you know, even the shipping of this internationally is a problem right. because you pack dry ice and dry ice gives out a lot of CO2, which is poisonous on the plane. So the cargo planes can only carry a certain number of dry ice containers with Correct. the vaccine. Correct. So it limits it. Mm. And as you can tell that with the manufacturer of it, the rich countries have already snapped it up. So, you know, poorer countries or even not poor countries like Singapore are not getting this immediately because mm. the United States and all that, which funded this. Correct. So the question, getting, basically, we are getting down to rich versus poor countries. As with and, a lot and, of things. Yeah. And as, what, as what well. does this do for the global economy? For example, I just want to mention that, you know, the rich countries take the vaccine, they use the vaccine, but that's not going to be enough. Like, for example, in Bangladesh just now, there was a cluster found in a garment factory. And there was an upsurge of infections and all that. Now imagine Bangladesh, which is one of the poorer countries, and then you close the garment factory down. 
but immediately there are repercussions because your supply chains are affected. Yeah, of course. And of course. So and jobs. Correct. So this but is that's the, the time down issue. Yeah, I feel yeah. there's a global and moral responsibility. And like we see, this is the time where the biggest charity that rich countries can really help out with is to help the poorer countries to make sure that the vaccines reach, they are distributed, and that the poor people there who need it as much can benefit. Yes, the, the problem is one also a practical one, even with the best of intentions. You look at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, yes. for example, yes. they have been given, been giving Millions. away tens of billions of yeah. dollars in vaccination. You come to another problem, which is not the science of vaccines, but human behavior. A lot of people, even when they have access to vaccines, do not want Take to get men. vaccinated. Yes. You see this happening even in wealthy countries, not so wealthy countries, and in poor countries. So that's another big issue there. Mm -hmm. Can I just mm -hmm. ask you something, uh, Gilbert, since you're the resident health guy? Uh, um, in... As far as these vaccines are concerned, a 95% efficacy, can I use the term efficacy? 95% mm -hmm. for both Moderna and Pfizer. You said, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I thought I heard you say that, that it's perfectly fine, that uh, you can get inoculated with it, it's, it's going to be a vaccine that works, am I right? Okay, uh... Based on the tests that they have conducted, yes, and yes, released, yes, based on all that, yes, but not yet in terms of actual public use. And I'll give you an I'll explain why. Let's say they tested it and they said, okay, after three months, there's no side effects, but there are vaccines and there are medications that could show side effects after a longer period, nine months only. Yeah. Sure, sure. So that's not no, okay, yet. but generally, yes. What mm. I'm pointing is that the rushing of this should not have affected the safety. Okay, uh, great. But uh, the reason why I'm, 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 I was, uh, I've been uh, I asked this question is because you remember many episodes ago and when, we, when the three of us first actually met was via Zoom, Yeah. right? And we started filming this the show via Zoom. Yep. And during one of those shoots, if memory serves me correctly, I did say I have faith in the human race yeah, yeah. that we will have a um, vaccine yes, and yes, we'll have yes. a vaccine soon. Yes. And I remember Gilbert saying, uh, well, you know, I'm very glad that you are being positive. You know, hopefully it'll happen. But then again, you know, I'm not going to hold my breath. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Remember, okay. we took a no. bet on that. So exactly. You can make some and, money. and hey, 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 hey. Okay, simple faith, man, simple faith. Now, yeah, however, yeah. that being said, um, the, the, now you see we fast forwarded it. Uh, the, I mean, at least in the US, in the US, yeah. and it's it's ninety five percent, and I'm pretty sure hundred percent will arrive very soon. Uh, we the human race always finds a way. However, I do also agree that there are quite I mean smallpox is eradicated, but not entirely around the world. Sure, uh, uh, no, I mean no, smallpox, I mean, smallpox was in around the world, but, but many the, other diseases, like TV, every other one, pox, is uh, still measles around. are still yeah. around. That's because Monks. of the imbalance of, uh, of, of, of poverty and mm -hmm. wealth mm -hmm. across the globe. And also education, sure, people's sure. desire to Now, let's it. talk about Singapore. Yeah. In Singapore, it is a, 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 a quite a regime. Mm -hmm. yeah? Babies being born, we send them for inoculation. Yeah? Uh, there, ha there are uh, some, uh, some small, tiny minority of anti-vaxxers, I would suppose, in this country. But by and large, you know, including my kid, including us, even whatever we could be, have been inoculated with at that point in time, we do get inoculated. Yes. Now, this vaccine, I mean, in Singapore's context, I'm pretty sure the government's going to say everyone's going to get inoculated. Mm -hmm. We'll start in stages. Mm -hmm. We will go with the frontline mm -hmm. workers first and the seniors. Yep, and all. Yep, That's yep. the right thing to do. Yep, yep. Eventually, all of us get inoculated. Yep. Does it mean that it's over? Uh, no, because we're an open country, yeah, because people will come it. in. Absolutely. Now, okay, this is another point which is important to talk well, about. Even if we are vaccinated and people still come in, we're already inoculated. Yeah, okay. So that leads to the important point which we need to understand about is that how long does the immunity last? And actually, that is what I posted in Health Correct. Zone Singapore today. If you go to Facebook and please go and look at Health Zone Singapore and, and, and subscribe because it's a great site. I asked the right question, man. Yeah, yeah, I know. I think it's a very important question. <laughs> it's a very important question is that this. You know, for example, there mm. are certain vaccines that you take, measles, for example, which give you lifetime immunity. Yes. You inoculate as a child or you catch it as a child. So the, the, let's understand that the way you catch, you get immunity is either you catch the disease, your body then overcomes it and the body learns 
to adapt. To adapt. Uh, right. How do you use its own right. antibodies? Our own immunity. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, okay. So that's right. one way. The other way is through a vaccine, and the vaccine then gives the Part body the, the information yeah. to create antibodies. All right. Yes. So those are two ways. But with other diseases, the flu, for example. It does not last. Immunity yeah. lasts one season. Yes. And, and why is that? It's because the... the virus mutates. And so there are different periods of immunity. The good news about the COVID vaccine so far, or COVID, not vaccine itself, but COVID itself, is that even if you catch it and your body develops immunity, preliminary, and I say preliminary because we've only been one year into this uh, pandemic, uh, is that it affords very long-lasting protection, possibly for decades this, After that. But this is what we are talking about now. We do not really have the timeline or the facts to verify that. No, no. But, but they can tell by how much degradation there is within a certain period and you can extrapolate that. So there are scientific ways to be able to see this. But we the don't good, know if it's not going to mutate. I mean, there are so many unknowns. Okay, now she's being pe very pessimistic. No, no, it's not pessimistic. No, no, no. Let me explain to you. Being practical. Yes. See, you said what you said. We all agree this is a very hopeful moment. I mean, everything showed that the stocks went up. There was so much happiness. We know there is a way out. Man's resilience has found a way out. Having said that, Practically also, we know somewhere at the back of our minds that this is not the end. It is the beginning of hope, but we are not yet 100% certain that this is going to cure all the woes. And one of that is also the rich versus the poor situation, right? Because No, no, but I haven't finished what I was saying, though, which doesn't disagree with you. Yeah. Oh, okay? okay. So my point basically <laughs> is that just because you get a vaccine, to answer his question, just because you get a vaccine does not mean the pandemic is over. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. and you know, the, 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 the World Health Organization had said this and got, got, got castigated for it because I guess people wanted good news, which is understandable. But this is the reality is that diseases don't just disappear. Yes. Viruses don't just disappear. Yes. yes. In the case of COVID, it seems the good news is that the virus does not mutate very fast. It's actually very, very slow mutation, mm -hmm. which is good. And that it has a very unique, because it's a coronavirus, it's got these spike proteins uh, on, on top, which is what this vaccine targets. Yes. So, long story short, yeah. <laughs> is that it's good news on several fronts, but it does not mean the end of it. And please, you still need to wash your hands and wear masks. Because, you know, honestly, masks are so effective in the prevention of the spread of this um, that it really is inconceivable and... So do you foresee? In the US, they are do you foresee? This. Do you foresee? You guys, including Daisy, it also, you know, she agreed to it, right? I saw that. Uh, Daisy also agreed that, of course not. Of course, it's not over. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you agree then that we all be wearing masks <clears throat> at least for the next ten years? Uh, no, I wouldn't say ten years. Ah, okay. So yeah, what is this then? When, China, when can we China. actually no, China say? China is a very good example. No one's wearing masks in China anymore. When can we say this pandemic's over? Uh, let me put it this way. What now, would okay? the, the measurement be? The measurement will be when it becomes such a low risk thing that people are no longer hospitalized. Over can I can I just okay. say something? You yeah. know, I think so. The virus not... will never disappear. That's my feeling. Correct. The so, virus will be with us for the next thousand years. Yes, but it will be like a flu virus Correct. that does not kill no, people it's, it's... because we have the vaccines and the immunity. It's, yeah. So it's managed. So it's like it's in managed. Europe where you had the plague, for instance. Mm. Or even if you take a really random kind of comparison, which is not with the disease. I think at one point of time when we were looking at something like terrorism and we used to go into the airports and stand in queue for, you know, ages to go through security. And mm. I think at that particular time, when it is any kind of plight that hits the human race. Everyone I mean, turns kiasu, kiasi. And then yeah. slowly as there are ways out, well, people I adapt think to it. To and, adapt. Yeah. And, and it's amazing. But it doesn't go away. Even, the threat no, doesn't go away. But even you forget, you put it at the back of your mind so that life goes on as normal. And that's what you're really looking for. Okay, I'm glad you guys said everything that you said because I wanted to ask that question so that our local Singapore listeners and viewers have a clearer picture sure, about sure, this sure. thing. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, we're running out of time, so we got to press forward quickly. Uh, what... We, what Next one we're going to talk about, I'm going to pass it over to you. Me? Or you talk about. Daisy. Yes. Well, this, uh, well, I'm just going to put it in a nutshell yes. because we were talking about ideas theft. Yes. All right. And it's a, 
it's it's something quite important, especially in today's day and age, where you know people are posting their ideas, their thoughts, their concepts. Now, what happened is there was an intern in an office. Her name is Chin, and her dad has an advertising agency, and they recently pitched for a project where they did not win. Now, the client, though, and this is what she has shared with us, did take and use some ideas from the pitch. And this apparently is quite common in the ad world. Absolutely common. So, however, yeah. however, yeah. she's taken the initiative to call it out. Yes. So the question that we are discussing is, what is an idea theft? And is it right to take somebody's no, idea? No, of course or, not. But, but, me, but, 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 yeah. but now, be but, it up. Relax, yeah. relax, okay? Because this is Less important for minutes. me to say. <laughs> yeah, because this is important okay, to say. Okay, give a quote from Omakaya. Because Quick. <laughs> copyright... No, no, it's important to understand when you use the word ideas theft. Because copyright does not include ideas, concepts, or methods of doing something. I mean, you may express your ideas in writing or drawings and claim copyright in your descriptions. Yes. But that copyright will not protect the idea itself. Yes. As revealed in your written or And it takes a long work. time to copyright Correct. also. So, so, I mean, you know, one of the things I, I remember was, you know, yeah, Melania Trump, she just plagiarized a speech from Michelle Obama right in the beginning when she had started. And part of it was word for word. Yes. I mean, this is theft. Yep. Yes. But Michelle Obama, of course, decided not to pursue. So, in a nutshell, because we are running out of time, it is extremely difficult to turn around and say, this idea was mine and you have stolen it. Having it is extremely that, difficult, but it's a having, damn bastard thing for people to do. Yeah, Sorry, but let but, me tell but, you this, okay? But, Someone who is in the media industry, this happens so much, I know. so many no, times. I, I, know. Think, I think and, sometimes uh, people are paranoid also. You can't, okay, for example, I've had a situation where somebody would turn around and say, I could turn around and say, listen, I have this great idea of a story. It's a love story. And there is this uh, Chinese girl who falls in love with this Indian boy. Wow, what a great story. That's my idea. But hey, I have no copyright over the idea. Somebody else would be thinking the same yeah. and, and do the it. The difference now, would be if you actually if I'd write written a book. a script. Yes. Or a even script. a script. Yes. And you've exactly. taken my then script. Then that becomes it. That's yes. Let me give you an exactly. example. Ideas, one ideas can't be sitting and talking about. A dime a dozen. Can't share my idea. Let me give you. Ideas a dime a dozen. Right. Let me yeah. give you an idea of what really happened if a movie script. This belonged to the James Bond franchise. Ian Fleming. Over a night with dinner, okay, over dinner with some friends with a guy named Kevin McClory, uh, and and they were over drinks and and me and a meal, they were talking and they're just bouncing ideas. And most of the ideas allegedly came from Kevin McClory. And then it became that Ian Fleming, in his free time, turned it into a novel and became a movie called Thunderball. Mm-hmm. Okay. And this court case went on over the theft of ideas in England. England, I think, and then all the US. And then they fought it for decades mm. until it reached a stage where finally in the 90s, no, in the 80s, late 80s, Kevin McClory won. Mm. And then the movie Never Say Never Again came out. Mm. It was just another take of Thunderball. Mm. Now, just to bring some interesting, you know, bites to what Daisy had mentioned about script, but paranoia? No. As a voice artist, I'm asked sometimes to read the script just to do a read and send it up so the client can listen to it and say, okay, that's the voice I want. Mm-hmm. But you know what people have done in the past? Mm. They've taken that sample, done wonderful things to, you know, mix down and clear up the ambient noise and all that, and master the whole thing, and used no, it. No, that, that's very that clearly is wrong. That is, yeah. Okay, so today's discussion, to close, <laughs> we discussed ideas about how to change social behavior so we keep our women safe, ideas around how to make Singapore a cost-efficient place to do business, ideas about distribution of corona vaccine, and finally, ideas about the theft of ideas. So before we close for today, I'm going to request Chris and uh, Gilbert to, to talk about the closing and then we shall have to say bye-bye. Okay, I'd like just like to do a very, very, very quick commercial break. Uh, this is uh, to let all Singaporeans know that if you're looking towards having a holiday 
a camping holiday, you can do so at the Jewel. They're having a glamping thing going on. It's so Wonderful. glam. Yeah. Yeah. There are tents and everything set Jewel. up that you can spend a night. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, why not? Why the heck not, right? Support local people. That's what we always say. Yes. Now, moving on to my end quote for today's episode. I really don't like this theft of ideas. I think some companies just think they're so damn freaking big that they can bully the small guppies, you know, swimming around in a bloody freaking pool of sharks. So I, I, I just want to say this is taken from a song from Johnny Cash. And that song is One Piece at a Time. It's about stealing parts from a, from a General Motors company every single day as a worker. It's akin mm. to that. So I'd like to pick out this, this four lines. I get it. I get it. One piece at a time. And it wouldn't cost me a dime. You'll know it's me when I come through your town, yes, swines, when you start advertising the shit that we give you. One piece at a time. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Over to you, Gilbert. So no so I don't have any uh, fancy quotes to end with today, but I do want to point out that a lot of things that we talked about, a lot of things that we complain about, and the problems that we have in our, in, in our society and the world come about really from uh, people not treating each other the right way. And uh, you know, I always believe in treating other people the way that we want to be treated ourselves. Uh, and I think if we started from there, a lot of these issues that we talk about, whether they're molestation or whether or not there's enough vaccines to go around uh, and idea thefts and all of that uh, would not be as serious and would not be there. So uh, my departing words would be the same as what I've always said to you guys, which is that uh, be safe, uh, but be kind. That's really important. So thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. And so sorry. in our humble opinion has always been about throwing up ideas. Importantly, our panel here has always believed that there are no bad ideas because as Charlie Day would say, sometimes even hearing a bad idea is a great way to a good idea. So please join us again next week. Thank you for listening and have a lovely week. Namaste. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>